Today is Saturday, March 30th, 2024. It's Easter Saturday, tomorrow's Easter. Camping up at the East Branch, Sockendaga River, good old Campsite 5. If you've ever watched my YouTube channel, you've probably seen me camping here before. It's been a pretty cold weekend uh, with the wind and uh, the snow. Uh, it's been in the 40s for a high, but every night's gotten below freezing. It's been in the 50s down in Albany, but it's you know, obviously warmer there. But I mean, I kind of like the snow because it makes it, you know, it makes it easier to see the light uh, at night. So I did a, I rode up to the top of 11th Mountain today, or well, the road summit on 11th Mountain, Long Eight. That was a lot of fun riding down. Going up, it was pretty vigorous. And I spent some time hanging out at Fox Lair, you know, the overlook there, the campsite too, with the great views. I mean, I love the views on that site, but there's never much firewood, and it's cold with the wind along the ridge there. But I mean, the views are fantastic, especially in the summer, you can sunset from there. Yeah, I'm being low in propane. I probably should have gotten some before I came up here, but I filled the tank up uh, uh, five nights ago. So, I mean, should be enough to make it through tomorrow. I'm just a little worried because the tank's getting kind of light. So maybe tomorrow won't be coffee and a warm breakfast. We'll see, it's my fault. I should get that. I should know better and fill the propane tank in the winter as frequently as possible just because it gets used up push the heater when it's cold but I got a lot of wood so it'll be a nice fire um, my Libby app you know that gives you the free book library books apparently if you're off the internet for more than two days they boot you off the books well you live and learn but I did a lot of reading yesterday I mean I got through three books so that's not too bad and they're full-size books but uh, I have videos and other things to watch in audio and podcasts I download, so that's what I'll be listening to tonight. Been doing a lot more studying about uh, off-grid cabins and uh, solar, and uh, um, I'm really interested in the prefab type things, just because of, um, I don't know, I just like the, the simplicity of it all, although I have some questions about the quality and durability, although they, uh, they, they do say they're often built at a higher standard than stick-built, but I want to get all the facts for sure. But I like, love I love the wooden interiors and uh, wood exterior. You know, I'm mean, not so crazy with the idea of a true log cabin, but uh, I just hate vinyl siding. I hate uh, hate drywall. You know, I want something that won't show the mud and the dirt so much. You know, and look you know look woodsy, especially if I'm thinking to live you know out in the country. And uh, been reading a lot about the hybrid inverters. They're pretty cool now in the modern technology. I mean, when I toured that solar cabin back, or solar house back when I was in college, it was a very different world with all that stuff. You know, things have really moved on in the past 20, 20 years now. And it's impressive, the technology. I mean, when, when, it, when I get this all together and built, I mean, it'll be fantastic. I mean, it'll just won't really have to even play with the batteries of the solar much at all. It just, it just will work. It'll be like a regular house with 120, well, 120 volt split phase. So you have 240 to run the well pump and stuff. You know, maybe a, um, a split unit for air conditioning and heat. Even though I want to primarily heat with wood, I need to have a backup way, you know, in case I'm, it gets too cold in there. I mean, I figure you probably leave the split, split level set at like, you know, thermostats at 40 or 45 degrees just to keep you know pipes from freezing if there's them not there to have a fire but uh, and it wouldn't have such too much of an impact on the battery unless it's exceptionally cold but I wouldn't imagine I'd be away if it was really cold and then air conditioning is always nice in the summer but especially if you have ex excess sun uh, excess solar coming into the batteries I mean technology is amazing now I mean it's not the rustic old way it used to be you know, you put the, you spend the money and get the good good equipment. Uh, it'll last a long time. Be a, you know a great place. We don't have to worry about you know power outages and you know all this crap. It's, you know, especially with climate change. Uh, I am not going to be political about it. I'm not going to you know. I'm not I'm not even sure if political solutions are the solution at this point. But you know, I don't want to be sitting in the dark every time there's a you know a big you know natural disaster. You know, ice storm. Uh, you know, hurricane, whatever else, crazy weather that's going to be more and more common in the coming years. But, um, yeah, uh, if there's 
I, I really love love the look of the inside, w the wood stuff in the cabin. Um, I got to research more how, how, you know, about cleaning it and maintenance and stuff compared to a standard house. But I just can't imagine moving to a place with vinyl siding and drywall, honestly. It's just, it's just not who I am. Um, I mean, the big thing is now just figuring out where I want to live and land and stuff. I mean, I've been looking at land. It's just, it's tough. I, you know, I'm so used to the whole wilderness experience. The problem is that you're not going to find a lot of land and a lot of wilderness anywhere near the city. I mean, even if I'm willing to pay a ton of money to do it, it's just, it's not practical. Uh, you know, the great, great parcels and the nicer land is all 30, 35, 40 miles from the city, which sucks. But I don't know. Maybe I gotta move, find a job in a smaller city where there's, you know, you don't have to go so far out to get out in the country. You know, a place like Plattsburgh, I mean, like where I went to college for two semesters. That's where that off-grid cabin was that I explored. There you can get out, you know, 15, 20 miles from the city and you're really out in the sticks. I gotta find it, but it's still New York, which kind of sucks, but I don't know. I gotta figure it out. I mean, I have a great career now. Uh, you know, I make good money here working in Albany and I love my adventures still. I mean, when I, you know, buying a cabin and having a home where I live, you know, that's going to, you know, be the place where I am. It's not going to be going out to the woods every week or two, but uh, we'll see. You know, I haven't made up any my mind for sure. I'm just really at the point of doing research, figuring out what my options are and trying to get away like this weekend sometimes, spend some great time in the beautiful woods. I mean, it's beautiful, clear evening now, and it's wind died down, it's, it's fantastic. Last evening was cold. Well, yeah, I mean, this morning was cold too. I ended up hiding out in the truck cap for a while. Solar's done great on the truck with uh, all, this, uh, all the clear skies midday. But uh, in the strong sun angle at this time of year. But uh, I did start the truck up just for a little, for like eight or nine minutes, just because I wanted to make sure every, all the batteries were well topped off for tonight. And the other issue is that, um, you know, I just want to get the fluids running through the truck engine. Because, I, you know, in the cold especially, I don't want everything to drain, drain low. And then, you know, for some reason have issues with starting. I just feel better having it running it for a bit and warm, bringing it up to temperature. I mean, if I wasn't, you know, camping out the wilderness for the nearest house is six or seven miles away and you know cars zoom by at 55 miles per hour and be almost hard to flag someone down you know i'm i'm not in a place where i want to not have any have any risk of trouble potentially even though i have everything carefully metered on there you know, you know everything is disconnected from the starting battery and i have a volt meter on the starting battery so i always know what the voltage is but uh and I know what a safe volt starting voltage is, but you know, you don't want to risk it out here. Okay, well, I'm gonna start cooking dinner. Uh, it was great chatting. It's been eight minutes of me just kind of rambling on in my campsite up here on the East Branch Sockendocker River, campsite number five.